Hi, everybody. What's going on? I'm DJ Six Myth. You're watching the Sit Down. Marguerite Moreau is here with us. She's got a brand new movie coming out August 3rd. It is called Monuments. Really nice to meet you. How are you? I'm really good today. I just got back from flying gliders around the block. I can't complain. It's a hot one out there in California. That's a nice way to start the day, right? Yeah, really good. <laughs> it only flew under one car and my son's only hit me twice. <laughs> so you're <laughs> off to a fantastic start this morning. I like it. Yeah, I mean, I'm awake. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't we talk about your new movie here because listen you've been doing this acting thing since you were a kid what inspired you to get involved in this one and what can folks anticipate when they check it out I think that actors love to work and so when they're offered a role they take it <laughs> as simple as so, that yeah I mean I mean I think that I connected with the with the uh project because it's about grief but it's also about how how hard it is to kind of like look death in the face and it does it in a really heightened comedic way and so there's a lot of levity there and I really appreciated that until I had someone pass away I didn't really understand that grief is like this weird thing that's really funny sometimes and heartbreaking the next and I think that the movie kind of like dances uh that really nicely which is kind of unfortunately perfect for right now and what we're all collectively going through. No question. Like you said, everybody deals with grief differently. And it feels weird to say that you need to laugh through grief, but actually the laughter can really help you out. So what was it like just unpacking that element of it, especially in this story too, where there's a lot of grief, but the levity is nice to change things up here. Yeah, I think like it really felt because we shot the end at the end that we earned the time to like breathe in a space that we trusted as strangers that came together to make something so intimate. So we had all this fun which then let us let it all go, which was a great healthy process for me personally. How about making a movie during this time, right? I mean, it's a crazy world that we're living in. So what was it like just to work and just to have something coming out that can take our focus off of real life for a little while? I think um, also too, I had lost my dad, not to COVID, but it was with a little one. Uh, you know, that is a very, helpful thing in that you have to be present every day and it requires that but then at the same time you have sometimes no space to be like i just need to like sorry for the sports metaphor but like take a knee right now i i can't and so to go do the movie was like i got to just go give all my focus to that and, and to myself so i might not have given as a young mom not given myself that so that was good yeah, it's really beautifully said. I know you play Laura in the film. What did you want to focus on the most with her? Because like you said, you just went through a personal experience. We're dealing with grief. We're dealing with trauma. What was most important for you here? Well, I think that the movie, um, it's like a, it's very loosely based on Homer's odyssey. And it's like a journey of him discovering, oh, how am I going to let go? How I had something and it's gone. Did I value it enough? And for me, it was, it wasn't so much that as like um, acceptance um, and, and just like it, I feel like it comes in like levels uh, 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 when someone dies of, of understanding that. So it gave me time to just grapple with my very limited, uh, I guess, understanding of what gone means. It's so weird. We're so removed. Or I'm so removed. I, don't, I shouldn't say we. Yeah, I mean, it's really hard because sometimes you can watch old videos of somebody, you have old voicemails saved and you think they're still there, but they're not. And yeah. it's, it's really hard to come to terms with that. And especially for you having just gone through that and then for that to play out in the movie, like I'm sure that was really difficult, but also therapeutic, I would imagine at moments as well. Yeah, I really feel like my dad is very much with me. You know, I'll turn on a radio and like Tom Petty will play. And instead of turning it down, I'm like, oh, hello. And just like turn it right up. And I feel very grateful for that. And so this was because I was having this positive connection and support. It sort of feels like they're here, but they're not. Um, the, the other side was maybe harder to tap into the sadness. Mm -hmm. So because we were doing a movie that was so fun, it felt like um, morbidly like kind of better. Like, oh, I can go to the darker places and, and consider these bigger things that it's teaching me. So it's sort of like, um, like, a, 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 like a quirky, magical, 
wonderful road trip, that's a little heartbreaking, you know? Listen, that's like life, right? I mean, we're all going through it and we all have different chapters in our life. I mean, even for you, right? You started out doing the acting thing as a kid, your mom now, you've been doing this for decades. I mean, what are you most proud of in terms of what you've built in your acting career and having it span for so long? Here? Um, I think that I've been able to just keep doing it, but also find like a really great partner in life and be able to have a family at the same time and have gotten to also get a degree and still stay in my like magical little uh, game role-playing fantasy world at the same time. I'm like, uh, is this a job? Because my <laughs> friends are like doing like really like, you know, heavy things. And, and I've like been spending the last half an hour in a closet waiting to like jump out and scare someone. <laughs> I mean, to get paid, not just at my house with my son. Right. I mean, you so, would do that anyway. Right? I mean, I would do that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the cool thing is it's that childlike feeling that can continue into your adult years. And I think you have great perspective because you did it early on. You went to college, you had a family. I mean, when you think about the beginning of it, what's the craziest part just in terms of being a kid that's doing it? And what don't we talk about enough about that chapter of your life? Oh, I was probably doing it for all the wrong reasons, right? To be liked, to get love, uh, to get attention. I thought, you know, I was in a lot of new schools, kind of like right when I started, just because my family moved at the time when you transfer from sixth grade to seventh grade to eighth, you know, it just was a time where I got really used to meeting people and I got really used to just falling in and understanding different groups. And I think that that's helpful for acting, but at the same time, the first time I think I was on TV in my, what I call my like, high school I landed at, or I guess that's where I went to school. <laughs> and someone said hi in a certain way that I knew, oh, that's not the kind of friendship that you want because they saw you on TV. Oh, right, that's so wrong. But I was now like a self-conscious teenager, but then acting also told me how to like connect mm -hmm. and how to actually make a friend. So here I was like having to transfer um, from a kid who needed attention and pats on the head to, more of a healthy, like, oh, if you speak to someone that way, that means probably something's going on that you need to look at, you know? So it was a healthy growth for me, but I don't think we talk about that for kids a lot. That's really important because those are little nuances you don't really grasp until you get to be more of an adult to do that in middle school and high school, especially while you're on TV and in movies, like you really find out who likes you for you and who's just trying to use you for you. And you can tell, even though you don't want to admit, oh, that didn't feel real, like for yourself, like how yeah. you're behaving. Mm -hmm. So it was humbling for sure. And then to look back and be like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could always look back and think I would do this differently, I would do that differently. But yeah, we, we live through it, we grow through it. And you have a lot of different great projects that you've done in the past. I mean, can you just paint the picture of where you're at in your life with Mighty Ducks and how that changed things for you? Oh my God, Mighty Ducks totally changed my life. I was able to go to college away from home and pay for it and have this whole different high school experience that was like side by side to my actual high school prom and stuff like that. So I have this whole crew of kids that's like, we're gonna know each other for our whole life. I don't know how much I'm in the script when we get to Minnesota for a hockey camp, I don't know. <laughs> I literally did my callback the day I was moving from Bakersfield to Newport Beach in Southern California. Wow. And my dad like put the couch down that he was putting in the, the moving van and was like, you have a callback. And I was like, for what? What? I'm signing out of high school. What's happening? Like, it all just happened fast. All of a sudden, my mom and I were for four months in, in Minnesota. And by the end of the first day, you know, I was w working in the the shaving cream to my hockey gloves because that's how you break them in but also reading the script and being like mom i'm on page four and then like mom i'm on page 99 we're gonna be here forever like i couldn't imagine uh anything like that up to that point i mean i probably could but not really uh on the ground action and then the fact that, the, that we shot the last scene of the first movie where Emilio gets on the bus and says, you know, I'll see you next season. That was not in the script, but the producer whispered it to him as a last take. And all of us were like, what? So, <laughs> you know, it was a really sweet group of kids that wasn't really like Hollywoody or anything. So it felt like, you know, I thought I would know everyone on the crew for the rest of my life. And 
they were all like, oh, you'll see. And I do <laughs> get that now, but we luckily, the kids, because we have this special thing that people like so much, by the time I was going into college and finishing the third movie, I, it, it sort of was like, oh, so this is where you start in acting. And it just only goes up from here. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't know any differently at that time. You're just so presently in the moment, especially for you you're doing college and filming at the same time. There's a lot going on for you there. Yeah, actually, I took a sabbatical during college so that I would actually go because I catch, I think I wanted to see if I liked anything more. It's hard after you do Mighty Ducks to see if you like anything more because I got so many introduced to so many things on such a high level and so so flashy and fun and for kids anyway you know roller skating in malls and going to the best hockey games and then having your uh home team be created based on the movie that you were in because I was in Southern California right. where the Mighty Ducks were made so I was like this is crazy <laughs> for me like a you know for a 14 oh, yeah. year old yeah and then Absolutely. to grow up and learn when the new show came out because there was no social media to really gauge how much people liked the movie to finally get to connect with fans in a more regular way was, it, it, it was a bit shocking and delightful. And then to go from that to Wet Hot. Yeah. Um, and in between that, I think I went to Australia for a long time and did Queen of the Damned. I remember booking Wet Hot and I was in another movie that I would have to wiggle out of to be in this and it was a really small part in a other thing and I was just like oh please oh please oh please oh please because even just reading the few pages of script that I got to see for the, the audition material I knew I just this is something so funny and special so then that part is history I mean obviously had has grown up to be sort of like a new language and comedy to be part of that is um and then with the Mighty Ducks is I feel, I'm like, it's good. I'm good. Let's go find a husband. <laughs> I want to make a baby. There you I go. Think. I can find a good husband, <laughs> which I did. How old is, is your kid now? Uh, he just turned six, which okay. is really so, fun age. <laughs> has he seen any of your work? Yes, he's seen The Mighty Ducks. And he gets it now that like mom does stuff. But half the time when Chris, my husband and I are talking, he'll be like, are you guys arguing? We're like, no. Are you doing lines? Like, no, we're actually just agreeing with something. Um, so he kind of gets it. He's not interested in it. But um, yeah, he's sort of proud. But I, I think there's still a disconnect. If maybe I was in like Black Panther or, or something like that, he'd be like, oh, I see. He'll come around. I mean, this was the superhero movie before the superhero movie. I mean, this was the sports movie in the 90s. And especially, too, for young girls and women to see boys and girls playing together. I, I think that was super important at that time. Yeah, I really appreciated how they didn't make it like Connie's a girl on the boys team. She was just part of the team. They really made her, they didn't really address that, which I thought was unique, um, or I do now anyway. Uh, and I've gotten a lot of people that have said that girls hockey in their community happened after the film. So just to be a face of that is special. No question about it. Well, Marguerite, you've had a great career. Thanks so much for hanging out and looking forward to the movie and talking to you down the road, all right? Good luck with your babe.